Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Amen. praise Good the Lord, morning. praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We welcome you, welcome you this morning to morning. Freedom Christian Ministries and More Than Conqueror Voice for Christ Ministries. Yes. Sunday virtual live service. We're back virtual this morning. Amen. So thankful praise to God. all of you praise who were God. able to join with us on last Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, April 9, 2023. Amen. We were live there at 725 East Calhoun yes, Street yes. in Bainbridge, Georgia. And oh, what an awesome, awesome, awesome time church. did we yes. have cel celebrating yes, Resurrection Sunday. And guess what? We're still celebrating. Uh -huh. Amen. We've not still stopped. The celebration continues on. One thing about this awesome celebration is we get to celebrate all year. Amen. Because Christ continues to resurrect us. Amen. We are daily continuing to die to yes. some things in our lives, to some old ways, to some old habits, old feelings, amen, old way of doing things, yes. amen. And then we're being resurrected in him. He's continuing to fill us with more and more and yes. more of his yes. grace yes. and his mercy yes. and his peace and his strength. And most importantly, his love. Thank God Come for on. the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of truth. And he continues to teach us more and more about the truth, amen, the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Remember, hey, this is the year of the Truth Seeker 2023. Yes. Amen. I am Pastor Phoebe Davis. Amen. Alongside here Morning. with my Praise husband, it. Pastor Eric Davis. Amen. We thank God for our pastors. Amen. Who are morning. joining yes. in with us this morning. Amen. Who are going to feed us with some more good word. We're continuing on, man. Come on. The word is on. Praise God. The truth yes. is on. Come on. It's on and on and on. And we're continuously being filled with more of God's truth. Yes. We thank you again. We welcome you on this awesome day of April the 16th, 2023. Man, if you were able to join with us this morning on the School of Healing Virtual Wellness Center, amen, where we were learning more and more on financial wellness. Uh, thank, thank you, Brother Tony Stokes. Hey, my brother, he shared some awesome insight with us, gave us some more important, updated information. Amen. I tell you, if you get an opportunity to go on our podcast, that God has, has blessed us, amen, to have this platform. It's all for him. It's the Creating a Prayer Culture for God prayer line podcast live. And he has given us this space, amen, so that we can teach more of his truth, financial wellness, uh, uh, intellectual wellness, social wellness, physical wellness, occupational, career wellness, all these intellectual wellness, all these areas, most importantly, first and foremost, spiritual wellness. God has given us this platform, amen, to share and teach on these areas of wellness. Guess what? The word pertain, the word of God pertains to those areas, amen. The, the scripture teaches us in the book of Hosea, the fourth chapter in the sixth verse in the King James Bible, where it reads as people, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. So God has given us yes. knowledge, amen, for us to not just keep to ourselves, but to share with others. So man, I tell you, you get an opportunity. We're on Sunday morning, six o'clock a.m. If you, if, if you can, six, six, seven, 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 zero, one, five, five, seven, uh, access code one, two, three, one, two, three, two, one, eight. Yes, amen. That'll bring you in pound. That'll bring you in to join with us. But that information will be listed later on in the service today. We're not going to be before you long, amen. We just welcome you, welcome you, welcome you. We want to share, amen. Just because Eric has some quick scriptures, he, scriptures he's wanting to share with you this morning, amen. As we bring, hey, man, we just want to drop some encouragement on you, amen. Get your plate, get your spoons, come on, get your, get your paper towels, your knives, your, everything amen we want to eat up everything that god has for us in this season amen because god wants us to know the truth because it's the truth that makes us free and god wants us to remain in this freedom yes. so that we can help and free in others and so again god bless you amen continue join with us monday mornings tuesday mornings on this, uh creating a prayer culture for god at six o'clock a.m come back with us on wednesday nights and thursday night wednesday is um our power of prayer, we start off at 7.30 p.m. 
praying. Amen. I tell you, and we, we always have that time open also to pray for others um, on our Wednesday nights and Thursday nights when we come back on for uh, the wisdom and Bible study teaching. That's New Freedom Christian Ministries and more than Conquerors Wars for Christ Ministries, 7.30 p.m. Join us. Amen. Amen. We're always eating some good fruit. Amen. We can never get enough of God's word, God's truth, because it is so needed at, at this time. Amen. We're seeing things happening in the world, but we're also seeing transformation take place. Yeah. We're seeing people being healed, delivered, oh, set free. Somewhere. We're seeing backsliders yeah, repenting and turning back to God. Prodigal sons and yes. daughters come on yes. repenting and turning back to God. Yes. Immature and mature Christians get into that place of maturity and calling on Jesus and allowing Jesus. Jesus to direct, right. amen, it's our paths, right. amen. We're keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. And yes. so again, God bless you. Welcome. Thank y'all for joining with us this morning. Come on, tune in to this. Share, share, share. Invite Good others. If up. you don't want to leave the house Bear today, come on. You ain't even got to get dressed up. Amen. You can sit right there in the comfort of your home yes. and hear the word of God. You're going to get some truth this morning. Amen. We never come on giving you anything false or fake. We give you that organic truth, the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank amen. you, Jesus. Okay. Praise be to God. Amen. We're so excited. Amen. We've been united by the word Ooh, of God. Come we're on. just the word of truth. Praise be to God. And we're not just, you know, just for one day of the year. Come but we'll on, continue come on. to talk about the death, the burial, and the resurrection Ooh, of yes, our Lord and Savior, on. Jesus Christ. That's why we're yep. so excited. Yep. Amen. And it's not a, a excitement for, you know, because things are going on now you know, in our lives, but we thank God for the good and the bad, amen. It's, it's, it excites us to know the truth, praise be to God, and we'll continue to be truth seekers in order to make more truth makers, praise be to amen. God, thank which you, is Jesus. the word of the Lord, and that's what we've been blessed with, and we truly thank God, amen, that we continue to allow this excitement for you to be united with fire, amen, amen. Holy Ghost amen. fire within us, praise be to God, as we continue to talk about truth seeker, continue to talk about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we yes. just like to share with everyone, amen, to encourage everyone in the word of the Lord, according to the book of John, chapter 11. And we're going to start off from verse 25 to verse 26. But this was after a time, amen, where during a time when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, praise be to God. And, um, you know, one of the most supernatural miracles that's been performed here in this earth, praise be to God, for everyone to witness and take, you know, take heed, praise be to God, you know, by the death, the burial, and the resurrection, because Jesus said, I am Lord of the resurrection, amen, and we can look forward to the word of the Lord to deliver us, amen, with the truth, amen. so that we can always reflect back to that time when it was, praise be to God, and bring it to the time and place of where we are right now in all of our lives and things that is going on mm -hmm. in this nation all around the world. So it starts off, amen, in the book of John, chapter 11, and we're starting off with verse 25, and we're coming out of the King James Bible. And it says here, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life, that he that believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever Live it and believe it in me shall never die. Believe it, thou this. Amen. Though we was dead, but now we live because we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. Praise be to God. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, amen. Just make an intelligent decision today. Stay on this uh, platform today. Praise be to God because the word of the Lord is coming forth. With, with, with fire, amen, and the opportunity, the doors, the opportunity of salvation will come forth. So you stay tuned, praise be to God, and hear the rest of what Jesus has already spoken. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Let's live. live in Christ. Live for praise freedom, amen. We love everyone. We thank God. We're not going to delay it any longer, but we love Amen. to introduce our lovely and beautiful 
Awesome pastors, amen. Pastor Lester and Sharon Hayes of New Freedom yes, Christian yes, Minute. Yes, Thank you, pastors, amen. Pastors with an S, pastor with an S. Pastors, together. Amen. amen. God bless you. Come on, shepherds. Praise be to God. Come bless on. us with the word today, amen. We anticipating on the word Thank of the Lord, Lord. Right amen. Now, God, yes, yes. Hallelujah. It, declaring it. Amen. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless. God bless this morning. Just so uh, delighted, excited to be here this morning. Another day that uh, we often say that the Lord has made because we create nothing. But he's made this day for us to rejoice and to be glad in it. And we're going to do exactly that. And you can already anticipate there is excitement. Yes. in the air amen and i'm extremely excited here with my wife because this is our final service in this location we're going to be moving in our new blessing that god has blessed us with so i'm going to step back there i'll be back in a little bit to bring forth some word but just let my wife take her liberty and you know greet you speak to you in her own way she has her own personal verbal expression given to her by god woman of wisdom resilient woman multi-skilled talent faceted i'm just extremely blessed and i could go on counting my blessings all day long but we want to thank bishop for getting us on this morning yes pastor and pastor people for that awesome introduction and the words of exaltation and encouragement so with that said i introduced to some represent others my lovely wife pastor sharon of 39 years amen and we're still going strong but still as not without adversity and stuff out there but you know, God has given us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as you heard a minute ago, we just look forward to celebrating God and the life that he's given us. And it's, it's a beautiful thing to know that after all you've gone through, that mm -hmm. God has never forsaken us and yeah. left us. He's still with us. He's still with the doors and making yeah. ways. Save us, we're saved. Heal us, we're healed. Yes. Thou art still our praise. Yes, so, uh, Lord. Pastor Lord. Sharon. Well, thank you, Pastor Lester, my dear love husband. I just want to thank God for being here today, able to wear my shirt. I want you guys to read it. This is a month of autism, and here we want to support, you know, and, and whether you know or have someone in your family who has autism, please reach out and give, give that support so the research can be done. We're not asking you to give to an individual person, but let's support the research, you know, whether you know someone or have someone in your family at this moment or not, you never know. You may, you're given to the future and it could be your very own family's future so you know we're giving Good people thoughts. we love god and god loves everybody yes so no matter what cause we give to it if it's a good cause and a cause yes uh pushing forward goodness for mankind right. we're working on the behalf of god so Hallelujah. you know just reach out and give yes but we thank god for this day but uh, this is the day that god Lord. and god only have created yes, thank so you, we're Lord. rejoicing Living we're giving thanks yes. to the Lord. we're just Bless loving you. god loving our yes. neighbor Hallelujah. You know, living Lord. life to its fullest yes, and we thank, thank god you, for that ability yes. to not only Love have you. life, yes. but have an abundance yes. of life, Lord. you know, yes. and so, Lord. you know, it is God who saved you, us, Lord. it Praise is God who created us, yes. we didn't create Lord. ourselves, oh, we were created awesome. by the almighty God, yes. and we are so, Praise so thankful and we do give him yes. praise and honor for that mm, I, so i wanted to greet you tell you all that god is still mm, lord yes god on that his yes lord under the earth Hallelujah. above the earth and all <laughs> yes. the heavens god he of the is earth. god yes. and all I, I am just so happy Thank about you, that mm. because it makes me feel secure Glory. Knowing that our God, Jehovah, yes. the one and only Jehovah, mm, hallelujah, God. the one and only Son yes. and living yes. and true God, 
Ooh. He still reigns. Right, right. He's yes. still heaven reigns. above. And yes. He's still yes. our yes. Father. So we yes. give God glory for that. Honor you yes. know, Ooh. it's been a trying time, not yes. only for us, but mm -hmm. for so many right. people. God. But God did not it all. nor forsake Ooh. us. The Didn't things face. we had to face, yeah. the things I know you had to face, he gave us all the strength yes, to face Lord, it. And to face it with joy, mm, with peace, yes. with love, with an abundance of kindness. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you mm, Jesus. My God you know, good. as we care for others, mm. God cares for us. Yes. And, you know, he has given us so much love yes. that we're able to give yes. love away. And so here we've got, we have to start setting goals yes. because there is a yes. purpose yes. to each and every one of our yes. lives. And my we have God. to set goals Thank to meet you. that purpose. Mm. If my purpose mm. today mm. is to look at someone oh. and give them a smile, yes. a smile from Jesus, yes. not, not mm. a smile, I want something mm. from you, but a smile uh, letting yeah. them know mm. that mm. Jesus mm. loved my them. God. Hallelujah. You. Bless you. you know, sometimes that can make yes. a difference Lord. in someone's life. And so that's what, whatever bless our purpose you. is bless you. Bless you. that God has given us yes. to this day. Because mm. see, we're in wow. this day right now. Mm. Tomorrow's gone. Hallelujah. I can't change. Mm. I'm sorry, tomorrow is yet to come. Yes. Yesterday yes. is gone. And I can't I change what happened yesterday, I but I definitely can work for today and the yes. future. And so let's do that. Let's show that love. Let's show that Thank kindness. You. Thank let's, you, Lord. Let's care about mm. us. Mm. It, it, it really matters yes. about mm. others. Brother, so they love you, so they know you. It, that part doesn't matter, but it matters that yes. we show yes. love and kindness to others Praise in the name of yes. Jesus. Precious. So I'm very excited about today. Mm -hmm. I want to pray and then turn you over Hallelujah. to Pastor Hallelujah. Lester, who is sitting on ready. You know, I've been yes. reading a few of his notes. Lord, He'll get yeah, too many God. in. He doesn't bring them up until we I get ready to start. So he doesn't give me that opportunity. But I know we have a uh, word Lord, coming Jesus. today. So let's bow our heads mm, and pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name Precious. of Jesus, we come Glory before you. you. We come before yes. you in your son's yes. name. Yes. Because you have told Only us, God, yes. in your word, yes. that whatever we ask mm. for in his mm. name, you will give it yes. to us. Lord. So, Father, mm. we ask yeah. for salvation yes. for Lord. others, God. Yes, Lord. We in ask for forgiveness yes. for others, God. Yes. And ourselves. That we ask be. for grace and yes. mercy for those of us mm. that are in yes. need of grace Thank and mercy, grace. God. Oh. We ask for salvation mm. for our neighbors yes. up Save and down God. our streets That's and God. our neighborhoods, yes. God, and those mm. that God are will. across the world, mm. God. Mm. Father, because we know it is your yes. heart oh. desire. Oh. That we be saved. Yes, Lord. That our neighbors yes. be saved. Yes, and so, Lord. Father, we pray, yes, God. Yes, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. for salvation, God. Only oh, we want to get to the man. heart of the matter, God. Salvation yes. for others, God. Forgiveness mm, for God, others. God. And we pray, God, that yes. even now today, yes, as a, this seed. The Lord, word of God yes. is planted mm, in the hearts out. of man. Mm, yes, Your yes, children, yes, those who you yes. created, mm. because you created us all, yes. but we're not all your Lord. children because we have not made that choice yes. to be your child yes. yet. But God, we plant, we pray that even yes. as that seed yes. is planted yes. in mm. some water, yes. some will. plant. But almighty yes. God, you and you only give the increase. Oh, We're God. praying and asking Hallelujah. for increase Hallelujah. today, Lord. So Hallelujah. Yes. Because we Wrong know. If you bless us, we're blessed. Yes, if yes. you heal us, yes. we're healed. Yes. If you save us, we are you saved. Are but thou art our prayer. Yes. Hallelujah, God. God. 
great. Yes, and Jesus. So yes, Lord. In the, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, we pray. And so there are those who need Jesus. healing, God. We pray for yes. healing. The there are those who need Jesus. salvation. Christ, we pray for we salvation in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. There are those yes, who need joy, word, God. Your love, draw God. We pray for yeah, joy. So in Jesus' name, precious, even as the precious, word come forth, God, need, God that joy, time. healing, Lord, salvation Lord, Lord, will come forth in your, your word. So in Jesus' Lord, name, we pray and we ask all in these the things, God, Jesus. in Jesus' Jesus, name. Wonderful. Amen. Pastor Lester, Amen. preach Amen. the word Amen. of God. Love you all. Yeah. Amen. God all right, Amen. baby. Preach all that right. word. Then. All right, all right. Praise the Lord. Very excited. Thank you, Pastor Sharon, for that powerful prayer and that powerful word of encouragement there. Amen. As we come on, amen, to bring forth the word of the Lord today, amen, preaching home, right, teaching home, right, we thank God for our own Pastor Eric and Pastor Phoebe yes, that is yes, to yes. labor in the ministry with us, along with our two ministers, Minister Smith and Minister Betty Biggers, but we're very excited, I shouldn't say excited, but we are excited, but it can't exp express the joy that we have to be in the plan of God, serving the purpose of God and serving God, and, you yes, know, glorifying yes. him in our calling and in this personal relationship we have with uh -huh. him. Right. Our whole aim since we've been saved is to please God yeah. in all that we do, think and say. So let's pray and get into the word today. Holy Ghost, we ask you now in the awesome, incredible, amazing name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to touch as this word go out to heal, deliver, save, uh, just have your way. Pour out your spirit today on all flesh, baptize uh, today with yourself, with your yes. power, with your fire. We're praying in the name of Jesus that someone will be ignited today as this word go forth and fall on good ground. It will break up uh, all foul ground today and that the seed that is sown will give increase in the lives of whoever that they receive Thanks. this word because the word of God is powerful and quick and sharper than any two-edged sword cuts the sun between the separation and dividing of soul spirit bone marrow it's a discerning intent of the thoughts of the heart of man I, I I can't reach him but the word can you have a touch that can change a soul and make it want to be convicted until it's saved and cried and repent to God so we thank you right now. We praise you right now, Holy Ghost, for that touch, for that breath that's going to touch somebody out there right now that's going through persecution, that's torn between uh, several opinions, may have backslid, may have gone out into the world into riotous living and continuing as it was during the day of Sodom and Gomorrah and the day of the, before the flood when Noah was preaching the gospel and when the Lord was telling people to turn away from your sin and they continued therein. But now we know there's no more sacrifice for sin, but because of your long suffering, saving grace and mercy, this is a great opportunity for people to be saved. An opportune time, Lord, as we lift up your name to draw, drag, convict, and bring people to yourself, God, as we preach the word of God to your people and testify of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the judge of the living and the dead. We give you praise now. We give you glory now. We give you honor. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Now let your will be done. Let your kingdom come and your will be done yes. in our lives here on earth as it is in heaven. It's our prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So I'm excited, as I said earlier, and I, I keep using that word, but that's about all we can do. It's, it's just so high what God is doing and what he can do. And, and so we try to do what we can to exalt, to make our boast in him, give a reverence to him. And so we are limited. David said such knowledge is just so high, uncomprehensible for us with our little, our little finite minds and his infinite wisdom. But we do the best we can, but we know that we're not trying to please man anyway. We're trying to please God. And I thank God because we know he looks at the heart. So he knows the sentiments of our heart. He knows the love we have for him in our heart. And so no matter what, 
humanity thinks about us, you know, how we look, how we dress, you know, all that stuff. We're trying to please God. Amen. And so I, I, I feel it in an honor today to bring the word forth to you. <laughs> Been a very trying time this last year for all of us, but we still here. And we realize that all the things God brought us through, it was to elevate our faith in him. Yes. Because he never forsook us, he never left us. He says, I won't do it. I'm going to be with you to the end of the age. And we're here to testify we're here because of what God promised us. He's faithful who promised, not a man that he should lie to you. And we have gone through, I think sometimes humanity don't believe that people in leadership go through anything. We've been pastoring since January 26, 2006, when we got to start installed as Pastor Nadine. And we have had some multiple tests, physical stuff. I mean, it has come at us from every direction recently. And you probably can see it up here. You know, I had two back-to-back -back brain surgeries. Amen. For that life-threatening accident, some of you have already witnessed some of the pictures, but you've also witnessed the recovery. Cancer diagnosis, COVID tried to take us out back in 2020. But through it all, God was faithful who promised. He didn't leave us. He didn't He was right there to go through it with us, to bring us through it. And what I learned was what God was doing according to the book of Romans, the first chapter. He said, I'm taking y'all to another level of faith, from faith to faith, from strength to strength, and from glory to glory. And he said to us in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 18, the King James Bible, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, these little light afflictions, are not worthy to, to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. That means God's going to take the lid off. Yeah, they took the lid off of my scalp a few men and did a cranial wash to get rid of some coagulating blood after they suction blood off of my brain. But I never missed a beat because God was faithful. He had faithful doctors who knew what they were doing. Yeah. And I got to be faithful. So because faith begets faith. So I can't be unfaithful. I'm not perfect. We're not perfect. Nobody on this earth is perfect. The only one that was was Jesus, the son of man. At the same time, the son of God, fully flesh, fully human. But he never sinned. So I'm not striving for perfection. Okay, because in the Bible, he talks about perfection. He's talking about being mature in your faith, being mature in your understanding, being mature in what you do for God, because that's the only thing that's going to count in the end. You got to be mature about that. Okay, you can't do it without the knowledge of the word, you know, because see, ain't no man can save you. So you should not give much credence to what man say if they're not giving you the truth based on the word of God, what's documented in the sacred scriptures. All these people out here saying stuff to you without any documentation and, and calling out other people because they know some scripture because they study the word, you know, don't, don't get caught up in that. If they're not giving you the word, don't be giving them your amen because it sounds good and they got a title that sound like they know what they're talking about. If they're not giving you the unadulterated, infallible, authentic word, of, I would never speak to you about God without his word. I will back up and all of our ministers and pastors that follow us are with us. We will back up what we tell you with the word. And for those who put the word down because they don't know the word and they got the substitute, Paul said, hey, I didn't come to you with a demonstration. I didn't come to you with with." the wisdom of man and wisdom of this world and philosophy and fable and all that stuff, tradition of men that make the glorious gospel of no effect. He told the Corinthian church, I come to you with a demonstration of the spirit and power of God. So you might hear me, but I'm going to be giving you God's word because the book of John chapter 8, verse 32, the King James Bible, the same word that made us free, the Lord said, I want you to know it and it make you free. So don't give me your amen. You say amen to the word of God. Every time I give you the word, you say amen to the word. Because it's always yeah and amen when it comes down to God's word. You don't have to ever agree with me. I'm just a vessel, an instrument just like you. Saved by grace through faith. Now, it's not of myself that I should boast about it. It's not of my good works. Not about how I dress or how I look, how I feel. But it's about the unadulterated, infallible, authentic, and errant word of God. 
that that is documented, that foundation has already been laid, that teaching of the original apostles and prophets, where Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone of every building. And according to the book of Psalm, chapter 127 of the King James Bible, except the Lord build the house, all your labor out there is in vain with your titles. I can't help it if you're an em empty system, making a lot of noise, ain't saying nothing in the attack mode. Jealous and envious because we studied the word of God, you know, and, and we are soldiers in God's army, armed and equipped with us holy scriptures because the Holy Ghost lives in us, the spirit of truth. That was a promise to God. We are sealed by him, baptized by him, filled by him, healed by him. And he's given us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he sent us out. We didn't go out. And the Bible said after that we receive him, he gives us power to become the sons of God. All of us are not children of God. You have to become his. Bible says in the book of John, the first chapter, verse one, chapter one, verse 12, King James Bible, as many as receive him. Now we all belong to God and we came from God. It's a whole different level to become a child of God. You got to receive him. So he can give you the power to become. It ain't automatic just because you're walking around here on two legs. We have to receive him, the father of all life. And now we can become the sons of God. And he said, now I give you the power to do so. That's when the manifestation of the sons of God take place. And he said, if you don't have my spirit, which I prom the father promised to give you after I ascended back to him and he sent forth the spirit of truth, the comforter, the helper, the paracletos to come alongside of you and help you become what we're not able to become because of Adam's sin. And then second man, Adam died, paid the price that was owed to God for sinners. Yeah, we, we, we inherited that, that sinful nature. But the second man, Adam came paid the price and the propitiation that was required, put us back, reconciled us back in the right standing with God, removed it. But if we don't believe in that finished work on the cross, we have no salvation. If we don't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that's the first step is I got to believe. Not being good, not dressing up. I don't care what your suit costs, what your shoes cost, what kind of car you drive, how big the church is. How much money you can raise? How many profits you bring in? How many uh, mega people you bring in to lay hands on your people and speak to them? Mm -hmm. Bible says signs and wonders follow those who believe in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 67. You, a believer can lay, got just as much power. God use whoever he wants to. And he said, those are the ones who made the glorious gospel no effect because they make it about their wisdom and not my wisdom. And he said, if you lack wisdom, ask God who gives it to you free. Don't ask no man for no wisdom. Ask God. And then in your getting wisdom, get understanding. David said, look, Lord, cause me to know truth in my inward parts and wisdom in my innermost being because he was a man after God's own heart. And guess what? He failed God. But he asked God to look in his heart, creating me. A clean heart. Renew, 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 renew within me. A right spirit. And God did it for him. And he repented. Go read Psalm 51. Let me tell you what David felt. What he, he was sorry. Fail God. All this arrogant pride for spirit out here. You want to attack people because they pray. They study the word and they share the scripture on social media. I got scripture on every part of my life. Why? It's because that's what God gave us. And I'm going to read this to you in a minute. So I want to speak to you today. I've been reading in the book of Peter. How? So I'm going to be spending some time. I might not get all the way through the, the two books or the two uh, epistles of Peter, but I'm going to be, this is what I'm going to be dealing with until I completely cover those two books, because I think there's a lot of lesson to be learned from what Peter wrote to the church in Corinth and to the broader church. 
No, no, no real specific church. He just started there, but he wrote it to all those who had been scattered throughout all the provinces of Rome, and you're going to hear about it today. But it was also for the, Christ, the church of Christian believers and all those who were on the way who were not yet there. And it's still speaking to us today because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I want, I want, I want to preface this. I, I, I just received this fresh manner here that I'm going to preface my message with today. Because this morning, I heard something this morning, you know, and I'm not going to get into who said it, but it was coming from a voice that's supposed to be speaking for God. It was a put down. And it wasn't specific, but it had no documentation. They were just shooting words out there, criticizing, putting down. When if they'd have gave me a scripture, I'd have took it personally. But you miss me if you don't give me a scripture. If you don't give me what's documented, I let your words go right over my head because your word has no effect, has no power. It ain't based on no truth. It's just based on what you think. And you think it's gonna have more of an impact on the hearer out there than the word of God. And you need to get saved. Can't substitute your word based on your tradition, your wisdom, your philosophy. It's got to be God's unadulterated fallible word to have an effect on the hearer. And all these people out there following you, telling, me, Amen, Amen. I was thinking the same thing. Be very careful. Don't be bid nobody God's feet if, if it ain't based on the word. Mm -hmm. So let me just give you this uh, out of the book of uh, 1 Peter. But I want to go back up here because this is what I got fresh as I was getting ready to get set up. We all are living. I say we all. I want you to emphasize that. Are living in what the Bible calls. I didn't say what people call, but what the Bible calls. Perilous time, difficult, hard times. Everybody's affected by it. That's right. You might be riding high right now. Tomorrow you may be in the dump. But if it hadn't happened, it will happen if Jesus don't come first. I can personally attest. I have my testimony that these perilous times are very real. But I can also testify that through them all, God delivers the righteous out of them all. Like the Apostle Paul and many, many others that I read about in the Bible, their personal testimony, and I grab from them, I, I you know, I, I receive from them the lessons that they learn through it. And that becomes applicable to my life because the struggles, the hearts are the very same that we go through today. He who promises is the one that's faithful to what he promised. Listen to this, Paul writing to Timothy, young bishop, young pastor, getting ready to be inserted into ministry. Thank God for how he was raised. We were raised in the church, but the church wasn't raised in us. Our parents took us far as they could. They couldn't take us where they'd never been. They taught us everything they learned. They couldn't teach us what they hadn't learned. They gave us what they had received, but they couldn't give us what they didn't. But it was enough to have a foundation, even though it was in the form of God. It was based on tradition. But there came an appointed time that God visited us. And he will visit. There's no one on this earth that does not have an appointed time assigned to them where you're going to either accept your purpose that God has for you or you're going to reject it. Israel was a great example of that. And some people, scholars will say, we are the engrafted children of God, Gentiles, the bad olive branch. When the good olive branch, the chosen people rejected him, he said, now go share with the Gentiles. Cornelius and his household was a good example of that first time. But we've been engrafted in, we've been adopted in through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That grace, that unmerited favor, can't earn it. So you can kind of say we 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 Israel part of Israel now because we've been engrafted in. They were they were created and chosen to serve God's purpose. They failed him, but it was extended to us too. So know who you are. 
okay? And listen to what Paul is telling his young son, getting ready to be launched into the ministry, and no doubt in that church or that ministry, he's getting ready to take over. There was already some seasoned seniors who probably were steeped in the teachings of Abraham and Moses and the problems before them. So Timothy had his work cut out for him, but Paul reminds him right off the bat of how he was raised under his mother and grandmother Eunice, his parents and grandparents, how he was raised under them as a child. From He said, from a child, you have known the scriptures. He probably didn't know the value of how he was trained and raised. We didn't either, but we thank God we never would have made it this far if we had not have been trained the way we were trained. I was 34 years old before I entered into a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, but I've been in church all my life. My wife, Pastor, all of us can attest to that. We're not who we were. We are now new creations in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Old teachings, old forms of godliness, old uh, traditions and all that. And all things have become new. And we are to walk in the newness of life according to the book of 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse 17. King James Bible, we know this now about ourselves. And we can't look back and put our hands to the plow. So what happened to Lot, wife? When God bring you out, you got to stay out. You can't without the word, you got to build. Sweep the house clean. You got to put something in there or them demons, them devils that had you bound, they're going to come back with seven more that's going to be worse than before you got rid of them or God got rid of them. Can't just got, get saved and do nothing. You got to study the word of God to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who need not be ashamed. Rightly, listen to me, rightly dividing the word of the truth. Cutting it straight. Now listen to that, you know, what Paul wrote, wrote, told Timothy here. He says, but thou hast fully known my doctrine. This is Paul talking now. Man of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, yes. persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch where he was preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. At Iconium, same place, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, <clears throat> but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Not man, not the bishop, your apostle, people, y'all need to stop talking about. Had not it been for the elect lady, the first lady, they, they saved my life. My bishop saved my life. My pastor saved my life. Devil is a lie. There's only one saving Paul talks about in the book of Acts in these churches right here, because they probably thought the same thing. The priest, Moses, uh, Abraham, they, they bought these names up to Jesus, who's right there with them, teaching in the synagogue the message from the father, establishing the kingdom of his father. And they're talking about who the, Abraham was my father. And Mo, they knew the law. Jesus was there to fulfill the law. He didn't get rid of it. But now he was actually the personification of it. They were falling short and keeping the law all over the place. And it was supposed to be a taskmaster or schoolmaster to show them just how sinful they were. Because if you don't keep all the law, you know, you can't keep some of it. You got to keep all of it. You violate any of it, you violate all of it. That's why legally share money, they couldn't please God. That's why he had to send his son to, 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 to come and to bring in a new, more excellent way. Dispensation of grace. <clears throat> but the price had to be paid. Reconciliation had to take place through Jesus Christ being that bridge to bring us back to the Father. He did through his death reconcile us back to now we can have a relationship with the Father. We are now the priest that can go in and present our bodies to him as a living sacrifice. Holy and accept him of God without spot or without a wrinkle. It's what the death, burial, and resurrection Jesus did when he finished on the cross. So it ain't my merits. It ain't how good I am. I'm still a filthy rag in the presence of God compared to his righteousness, his holiness. I'm still striving, still a work in progress. But I can't touch through my work and effort the work that he has already begun in us. He's going to continue to perform that work as long as we remain faithful to him that he started. 
Book of Philippians chapter one, verse six of the King James Bible. See, I ain't gonna tell you stuff that I came back up with. The word was documented in the sacred scriptures. Not the watered down translations, the layman stuff. This right here is unadulterated, infallible, authentic, inerrant word. This is the truth he wants you to know. And so Paul, he goes on to say, you know, Timothy, you know, all the others that were there listening to him teach, they know what Paul had went through. Paul was radically changed on the road to Damascus. He was persecuting the saints about the name of Jesus Christ and their salvation and how they talked about the resurrection. And Paul was persecuting them. They stoned Timothy, not Timothy, but Stephen in the, in the book of Acts, the seventh chapter. Paul holding the coat, his name was Saul, then watching them do it, had that letter. But after that, on the road to Damascus, he was blind. And Jesus spoke to him, appeared to him. After Jesus had, 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 he spoke to Paul, changed his life. Spoke to him. Paul, uh, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Got his attention, radically changed him. Yes. Now he became an ambassador for Christ. And so here he is now in the new radical change ambassador for Christ. And look at how he's representing the same God that he had been persecuting, the saints who served that God, had them rested persecuted, killed. Now he's, I say, me talking, trying to make amends. If you listen to his, 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 his diatribe of all that he went through, you might want to say he deserved it. At least to me, that's what he's saying here. But see, grace don't allow us to receive what we deserve. That's why Paul cried out three times when he had that thorn in the flesh. I don't know what it was. It said thorn in the flesh. That's good enough for me. Over in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 12, verse 8 and 9, King James Bible, he asked God to heal him. He was still being used in ministry, that light affliction that he talked about. The glory of God was being revealed in Paul, but he still asked God to heal him. The Bible said thrice he asked him. And the Lord came back and told him, Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. And Paul said, I would rather glory in my affliction that his grace might appear upon me. Man, that thing blessed me with all that I've had to go through this year. Diabetes, cancer, COVID, my wife and I, you know, she, she, whatever I went through, she went through because she was right there with me. Life-threatening accident just back in October. And now brains, two back-to-back -back brain surgeries. And here I am, <laughs> glory to God, a few weeks, months later in the process of moving at the same time, here I am preaching and teaching the gospel. That's what God can do. His grace is sufficient for me. It was sufficient for Paul. Why can't it be sufficient for us? Why do we have to put so much confidence and trust in titles? When we can go look in this word for ourselves, we can get on a, a, a Bible teaching a Bible preaching. That's what the Lord said in the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 42, King James Bible. Paul said this, we are commanded by God in these churches here. We're commanded by God, preachers, to preach the word of God to the people of God and to testify about the mysteries of Jesus, the mystery that he is the judge of the living and the dead. There's no other judge. I'm not a judge. We judge nothing before it's time. We don't judge, so we won't be judged. But there's coming a judgment day. First, the great white throne judgment, all those evil people. You're going to judge them before that great white. And after that, the judgment seat. We got to, That's what we're going to give an account for what we're saying right now, what we're doing right now, how we're living right now. So don't think for a minute this stuff you spewing out of the people that ain't got no, no documentation to back it up. Those are idle words. We're going to have to stand before the judge and give an account. Me too. But see, I asked them to forgive me back when I was 34 years old. Yes, she did. And since then, I'm saying what the word says. 
because I know that I got to stand and be justified by what I say. And if I ain't saying what he give me to say, ain't no way I can't justify nothing. I'm justified in my faith by what he did on the cross. That, that, that's what justified me. Yes. He goes on to say here, you know, mm. he said, what persecution I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, he didn't say who is going to cause the persecution right there, but persecution can be caused by people. I can bring persecution on myself by, by some of my choices, uh, some things that I do in ignorance. We learned that this morning, the book of Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. God's people perish for lack of knowledge. We perish today, even as God's people, for a lack of knowledge. Also in the book of Proverbs chapter 29, verse 19, it says in the King James Bible, we also perish for a lack of vision. Mm. Got to be able to see where this is going to lead me. I know where tradition was taking me away from pleasing God. And you don't please God, who's the only one got the power to put us in heaven or hell. Remember, hell was created for Satan and his followers. That's right. And if I'm not pleasing God, my father, then I must be pleasing the liar, my father. Mm. There's no in between. It's, it, it's cutting it straight, mm. discerning it. We don't want to face that truth. Now is the time to face it and be free. If you made a choice for that lifestyle, make a choice for the purpose of God in your life. Yes. It's up to you. It ain't up to nobody else. I, I can't condemn you because there's therefore no, no condemnation to those who be in Christ. There may be some self condemnation, but I'm not going to condemn you. I don't have that kind of power. I'm trying not to condemn my own self mm. by being in Christ Jesus. Those who walk not after the gratification of the lust of the flesh, but those who walk after the things of the spirit. That's who I'm trying to be. So I can please God. And you can do the same thing. We're not better than you. Some people think because we preach the gospel and, and you know, we studied the word of God and we know how to talk the language but we also know how to live the life being faithful to God. That's right. Not perfect, but being faithful to God. And, and the maturity that we receive is what's perfect. Because if the truth makes you free, then you're free indeed. Yes. And he who the son has set free is free indeed. Yes. We know that. That's why we love the word. <laughs> now we can do what Paul said in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse one. Stand fast in the liberty, that freedom, wherewith Christ has made you free. Not man, not no bishop, not no apostle, not a dozen prophet to come in and spew uh, stuff all over your life and smear oil on you and knock you down, wave coats and put all that craziness. That's, that's the spirit of uh, showmanship. Mm -hmm. And it's got a lot of people, man, bound. Mm -hmm. And they think they're free. Just cause we physically free to run around the church and, 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 and you know, dance and shout because the music is, and I like praising God. And that's a freedom that we have in, in, in certain gatherings, conferences and all that, that's great. But when I step out of that and I go back out here in the world, I still got to live out here in, in, this, in this imperfect world where there's trials and tribulations. And until I'm spiritually free, I'm not free at all. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Not where a dozen whoever is saying all this stuff to you and not, not giving you any documentation. Because you can carry the word with you, not man's word, but God's word. Because he said heaven and earth will pass away. That conference we're in, you will forget those people to the next one. But see, the word of God, according to the book of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, King James Bible, so shall my word be yes. that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return void. It has a specific purpose that God want to accomplish. And that's why he sent it to that purpose. And you might be that purpose. But if you don't hear that word, the Bible said faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Because without faith, we can't please God. Book of Romans chapter seven, uh, 10, verse 17, the King James Bible. 
that, that word hearing, okay, when you look at it in the track, it means a springing forward. You got to get your own revelation. It's got to spring forward like a brand new day dawning. That means you sitting there, you hear it. Nobody else in the, in the, in the conference probably heard it, but you did. You came there, so you say, I got to go get me a word. And sometimes we get, get caught up in the showmanship and the hype and watching what everybody else is doing. Get your light bill money. Give me a thousand dollar seed. The seed is the word of God, people. Book of Genesis, chapter 8, verse 22. It's the word of God. He's teaching those people who are farmers the power of a seed. He ain't talking about money. And then it, it, it gravitates on over to the New Testament. He's in book of Mark, chapter 4, a lot of verses. It's talking about the seed of the word that's been given to sowers, teachers, and preachers of the word. And he said, first there shall be a seed. And we don't know what kind of ground it is. We know that there's good ground, hard parts ground, stony ground, and weedy ground. But there's also good ground. And when that word goes out, that's God's word. It, it, will, it will fall on all of those different types of grounds. But I'm praying that in the midst, there's good ground. And he said, first there shall be a seed. Come out the word. Then a blade in that, in that, that, that you'll see it break through the ground if it's good ground. A blade. And then a full ear, meaning fruit in that blade. And then harvest coming. Now you can put the sickle in together to harvest. And they'll remain. Not building a bigger church, but building bigger believers in the church, whether it's small, medium, or large. Yes. It's about building bigger believers. Because if you don't believe, you can't receive. And most people say, I will believe it when I see it. Well, if you don't believe it, you're never going to see it. But I would say anybody who comes to God must first believe. God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. Whosoever but leaveth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. And so understand what Paul is saying here. You know? He goes on to say here, but evil men evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived but continue thou in the things which thou have learned and have been assured of knowing of whom thou have learned them and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Yes. Isn't it what he says now? All scripture is given by inspiration of God, breathed out by God on those original apostles, those major prophets, those minor prophets. Breathe out on them. That's what it means. God breathed. Nowhere in there now did it call, did it say anything about yo. A late lady, your prophetess, your bishop, your pastor, didn't even mention it, even though they're in the Bible. So that means God can choose who he wants to. He even chose a donkey to speak. You know the story in Baal? When devil, you know, when, the, when Baal wanted him to go out there and persecute them Jews, they were multiplying so fast, he became concerned. More of them, more of them than, than us. You got to go down there and curse them. He said, you can't curse what God bless. Okay. Then he told Judge Deborah, a female judge, for those of you out there say women should be used by God. He said, if you don't go, I'm not going. Because of her reputation as a great judge, a great leader. And there are other females in the Bible. They're Phoebe, a whole bunch of them. They, you know, Philip's four daughters prophesied. Oh. And he goes on to say here, you know, continue those things which thou have learned and been assured of, knowing of whom thou have learned them. Be careful who you learn stuff from. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation 
pro he says through faith in which is in uh, Christ Jesus, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Not everything people say is given by inspiration of God. For reproof, now you got doctrine, that means you have something that you can build on, a foundation, that's the doctrine. Teaching of the apostles and prophets, the original eyewitnesses who witnessed things, who were right there with him, Got it directly from him. He breathed it out on them. For reproof, meaning if I'm doing something wrong or if I'm living wrong where it's not pleasing God, the scripture will correct it. You don't need people to. Because they get into a lot of legalism. You better stop doing this. You won't ever hear me say you better stop doing this. I don't have the power and authority to tell you that. You got folks running around here talking about, I declare and I decree. You can only declare what has already been decreed. God is the one. That word decree means a law been established. And before he did it, there was others who tried it because of the position they held. But he's the one who had declared these 66, I mean, decreed these 66 books. And we are to declare in faith what he's already decreed. You don't go above God. I don't care who you are. How much authority and power you think you are. You, you are. I loitered on yourself. Mm. That's what the, the word decree. These are his decrees, not yours, not mine. Mm. We declare what he has already decreed, what he breathed out by faith. Faith declaration, we call it. Because we speak in faith. God can use faith. Without it, we can't please him. Book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, King James Bible. We want to lord all this power above God on ourselves because of a title. He goes on to say here, and for correction. Mm. Establishes me on a foundation that's been laid where Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone of every building. And then if I'm doing something wrong, I look in the scripture and it'll tell me what's wrong with it. And, and, and the things about what's wrong with, if I'm going against what God has decreed, that's wrong. But he don't leave me just wrong. He said, and for correction. It will correct itself. Mm. Or correct us who are wrong. And also it's good for instruction in righteousness. There's no other way we can become righteous but through the blood of Jesus. That's how we're made righteous. Because he cleanses us purifies us, sanctifies us, justifies us by faith, by using the inspired word of God. Gets rid of all unrighteousness. Book of 1 John, first chapter, verses seven through nine, the King James Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. Put us right back in right standing. There ain't no license not for us to go out here and go crazy. And wow. continue to be led away by our own lust for desires and continue to sin because there's no more sacrifice. If Jesus hadn't died, there'd be more sacrifice. No more bullets. There's no more sacrifice for sin. Wow. All I have now is, is, is a delay from God's coming. Jesus coming. He's coming to get it right because right now he's a high priest and assessor. He's an advocate. He's a savior right now. And we must repent of our sins and accept him and his promise to be put back in right standing. Because once he comes, he's coming to sit on the judgment seat. He's coming to judge the white throne judgment. I won't be able to get nothing right then. I just have to stand and justify what I, what I said right now, why he's delaying his coming. I, I'm gonna give an account. That's why I'm saying this so strongly because this is word. Because I wanna be justified when I stand before him, when he judges. You should want the same thing. I'm no different. I'm just saved by the word, by the truth. And I can defend that truth. And I'm not trying to please man because you don't have no heaven and hell to put me in. He does. And I'm hoping that we've done enough that we can stand justified. Because the Lord is looking at our hearts. We've hidden the word in our hearts that we don't sin against God. I might mess up and blow my relationship with you. I'm not trying to please you. I can't serve you in God. 
and love one and hate the other one. And if you are walking in these inspired word of God, these scriptures, you and I can walk together because we're in agreement, not with each other, but with the word. And until we all come into the unity of that faith that it teaches, to that full statue of the knowledge of who Jesus is, meaning you got a vertical statue here, heaven, has God the Father, the Word, and Jesus Christ right there. He's at the right hand of God. Well, guess what? We pray, thy will be done, thy kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. Until we all come into that common vertical alignment with what's in heaven, that's the statue. That's it. Well, what is in earth looks like a mirror's what's going on in heaven, bearing witness in heaven. Not this... It's horizontal stuff, Illuminati and all these 4,400, 200 different denominations. That word denomination means divine. Everybody's struggling with the deity of Christ, the preeminent one, only Savior, only name by which men can be saved. Why do we need 4,200 different denominations? We're a non-denominational ministry. We preach and teach sound doctrine, and we let the Holy Spirit convict. We let God give increase. Some of us plant, some of us water, but we don't try to give no increase. We don't try to say who's going to go to hell, who's not. We don't try to say who's going to be saved, who's not going to be saved. We just preach and teach what we're doing right now. Let it be your doctrine. Let it reprove you. Let it correct you. Listen to what he says. So that that instruction of righteousness, okay, it says instruction in righteousness that the man, and I'll say the, 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 the man in and woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. That where he's saying man, he's talking about humanity. Not getting gender specific, you know why? He has no respect to person. But he speaks in masculine language of Paul does. <clears throat> because what he knows is this, this is, this is more powerful than anything. Then your gender, your education, your PhD, whatever, whatever you got. This is more important right here, what God says. And look at what he said the result is. Perfect, meaning mature in your understanding. I know you think it means you ain't gonna never do nothing wrong. That won't happen until we take off this corruption and put on incorruption. Hopefully we've endured to the end to see what the end is gonna be. Hopefully we worked out our own salvation with fear and trembling and endured to the end to be saved. Mm. Salvation is past, is present, and it's future. I know a lot of folks, once saved, always saved. I can do a whole teaching on that. That's not literally speaking, figuratively speaking. So you got to have a spiritual understanding, spiritually discern what that is saying. You still got to work out. I have to, we all have to, our own salvation with fear and trembling and endure to the end to be saved. That's that eternal salvation. You know, it's like, what is your life? It's a vapor. Here today, gone tomorrow. And we keep putting off stuff for tomorrow, which ain't promised. In other words, the scripture is teaching us how to live our life in light of eternity today because of the brevity of life. Look what he said. Perfect, meaning mature in your understanding. Thirdly, furnished unto every good work. You know, we buying a new house because we got to move out of here because of my injury which is being healed. So I got to move to a single level home. I got upstairs here, 12 flights of stairs. Can't, can't do that anymore. I'm not a young guy anymore. Getting ready to turn 68 on the 28th of this month. I'm in good shape now. But when God bless you, you got to go with the blessing. You got to treat his blessing like a blessing. That's so I go to close and then my wife on the 27th of this month, we are packing up right now, getting up out of here. Why? God has blessed us. We didn't go find the house. God led us to the house he had for us. That's how God is. He, he meets our need because he meets us where we're at. And if we're mature and understanding that he is Jehovah Jireh and he will provide, he will supply all that we need according to his rich and glory by Christ Jesus. We don't have to want for any good or beneficial thing because he is our good shepherd. Yes, so that, look what he said. 
we can be thoroughly furnished under every good work. Notice what he said. Now, good work. After you get saved, the work is good. We will take that with us. We, I want to say it's in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 12 over there. Our good works are going to follow us. Titus talks about you're not saved by your works of righteousness. Are you saved? But by grace through faith. So there's a lot of people out here doing a lot of righteous work and they think they're saved. But the thing that counts is the good work after you say that we take with us. And this is all in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 10 to 17, the King James Bible. I just wanted to get that out there. That came fresh this morning for somebody. I know it was for me. I'm eating it up. But now I need to go here because here is the topic that I had prepared or researched to give you today. That was good right there. I mean, it tasted good to me. It says, knowing the truth is the answer, only answer I'll say, to false teaching, false prophecy, false doctrine. Let me see that again. Knowing the truth. Each individual need to know the truth. Book of John chapter 8, verse 32, King James Bible, that's Jesus' will for us. That we know the truth. And the truth make us free. Not somebody with a title, not a dozen dynamic mega speakers, people that you bring in for your revivals and all of that. There is a revival that comes directly from God. He sent his word to revive us and give us life. Mm. Didn't send no man or no woman. So you can bring all of these folks in if you want to. And they come in and they, they're great orators. You know, they have great stuff they say to you, give you what your ears want to hear because they're itching to hear something. That's why people flock to them revivals. They flock to them gospel singers. But see, we're worshipers. And all of us worship one audience. We don't have a choir that comes and sing to the church, but that's what we have. That's tradition. Everybody in the church is supposed to be offering a praise to him. We will bless the Lord all the time. His praise shall continue to be in our mouth. Not to you sitting out there stiff, not moving. Some people might get up and praise God because you're, you're enjoying the music. I, I love it too. Got my playlist. Yes. But all of us are supposed to be worshiping one audience. Him. Him. Not singing to each other. And, and we traditionally want that. I grew up in that. But when I, when I realized David taught me how to worship God and him only, isn't that what Jesus told Satan when he was tempted? That he was going to worship the Lord too? And him only was he going to worship? God's a jealous God. Stop singing to each other and sing to him. Cause, 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 cause here's what's happening. And I'm not, look, I'm not knocking nobody. You do what you do and that's between you and God. But I'm just trying to make a point here. You go, I, I know I did it for years until the Lord delivered us and began to perfect and mature what we're supposed to be doing according to the scriptures. Remember, correction, doctrine, foundation, it's where we're at now. We can't go back. Because the Bible says any man look back and put his hand to the plot of old traditional things, form the garland that he bought us out of, working that stuff, you become unfit for the kingdom of God. You know, that's in the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 62, the King James Bible. Thank you. Paul said, forget those things that are behind you and reach for those things that are before you, those mature things in Christ Jesus. And that's what we're striving to do, pleasing him now. At, at, the, at the possibility of being persecuted for it. There's probably somebody right now got a problem with this because they think I'm attacking them. They think I'm coming. I'll give you the scripture. That's what you all don't want to hear from a preacher. What does the scripture say about it? That's the report we ought to believe. That's how you're going to be instructed in righteousness so that you can be thoroughly furnished and prepared unto good work that you will have some good work to take with you. Remember what 
he said to the woman at the well in the book of John, the fourth chapter, she said, we know, we know our ancestors, we know our history, we know how we worship. And he said, look, I'm seeking for such right now, going, going to and for searching for such that will worship me in spirit and in truth. This is what this is, I'm giving you the truth. So we'll know what's required of us. Now, let me tell you the best kind of worship it is, serving God. Mm. And we're serving God in and by the spirit and the word of God is in our heart. When your hands go up, you will know, I will know, anybody will know who we worship. Not being in church and the music is great, I don't have no problem with music. And you're sitting there. You're not going to worship God until the leader who is sitting there on the altar legs crossed, looking at you sitting there, looking at them, tell you to get up and lift your hands. That ain't the Holy Ghost initiating worship. That's the leader calling you out and telling you what to do. So you're just doing what they told you to do. And when there's no relationship, it's like a empty system, just making noise, but you're not saying anything. Because there ain't nothing, and when there's nothing in, there's nothing can come out. So it's impossible for me to worship him in spirit and in truth. Because I got to have his spirit in me. It ain't automatic. That's the promise of the Father that he sends after Jesus ascended back to every believer. He want to be in all of us. So that when he comes for his worship, when he comes into the sanctuary that's been created for him, when you sense his presence, because David said in the book of Psalms, chapter uh, uh, 16, verse 11, the King James Bible, in his presence is the fullness of joy and pleasures at his right hand forevermore. He's bidding us to come alongside as he comes alongside. And when we meet, worship can take place. Not somebody up there sitting down and telling me, get up and clap your hand. Get up and run around the church three times. Get up and give me four amens. You're just doing what you're told to do. Not what the Holy Ghost has touched you to do and you sense his presence and joy unspeakable began. And Jeremiah said, it, it's like fire shut up in my bones. And when the Holy Ghost initiates the revival, something in us has died and something has been brought alive that inner man, that quickening of the, the mortal spirit, the mortal body, it comes alive and we can no longer deny the power of God. Hands go up, feet start to move, tongues come forward. Why? Because the baptism of the Holy Spirit is taking place. Why? It's because we created a sanctuary that the Lord said, I will be so pleased to come and dwell in among my people. And I'll let you know that my presence is among you, says the Lord. All right, now I want to hear this kind of preaching. Oh, good preaching, bro. But we got to know the truth. That's right. Be made free by it so we can worship God in spirit and in truth. Not each other, but God. Mm. Don't want nobody to see me sitting out there, so I'll try to blend in. Mm. Cell phone in the seat. I'm still looking at the cell phone in another service. Scripture, text, over in the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, verse 21, the King James Bible, also in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, King James Bible. Let me read the scripture to you now, y'all. I know some of you right now probably crossing hands, doing everything, want me to shut up. Knowing this first, before you go there, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now, let me, let me delve into this a little bit. The minor prophets and the major prophets have already been inspired wrote the prophecies down, Messianic prophecies and Revelation prophecy. The whole word of God is prophecy. Some have already been fulfilled. If you read it, you'll know that. 
some right now in the age and time we living in is being fulfilled while we plan whatever we plan church. And there's some that's yet to be fulfilled. And that's when we can expect Christ to come back. All these folks run around talking about, we must be living in the last. Let me tell you when the last days, in, in, in my recollection, the way I understand the scripture. When Jesus Christ said on the cross, it's finished and ascended back to the Father. He, hang on, he hung around 40 days and appeared unto you know, those disciples, those supposed to be hand-picked apostles. Remember that Mary was the first one went there and tomb was, you know, he had left. And she went and told everybody. So don't be talking about no man that she did it. She went and evangelized. She spread that good news. They went to investigate what she said and found that that tomb, just like he said, he had rose. But, but, but the revelation that, that I got out of that was this. My salvation was hanging in the balance. I couldn't save myself. Nobody could. So he had to get back to the right hand of the Father and be restored back to his glory so he could now become my advocate, my high priest and assessor. If that didn't happen immediately, I might not have gotten saved. And so a whole bunch of other people too. Why? Because once he finished his earthly task, paid the price and reconciled us back to the Father, put us back in right standing, People could not be saved by grace through faith, not of themselves, not legalism, not doing everything right, trying to be perfect and not mature, not perfectly mature in the things of God. We needed that advocacy. We needed that high priest to be at the right hand of the Father on our behalf. Because the last days had begun. And I don't know where we at in history. I just know when I think they began, based on my understanding. And that's how I got saved, because he died for me. I had to take it personally. No more high knee stays. No more serving pagan tradition. I know some people right now saying the whole Christianity thing is about paganism, because it was given to us by man, given to us by the Romans, and all of that. And that's your right. I don't have to agree with it, but it's my right too. I don't have to try to prove to you who God is. He'll do that himself. I just got to be able to know who he is to me personally. That's intimate. You have to do the same thing. You can either reject or you can accept. I choose to accept. Why? What choice I have? I could not save myself. I could not get rid of the, dom the, the, the domination of sin in my life. But when I heard the truth, I got free. And I'm still free. I'm standing fast. Me and my wife, we're standing yes. fast in the liberty where Christ made us free. And since we are baptized by his Holy Spirit, we're filled with his Holy Spirit. That means we got power now to stand. And after we've done all we can do to stand, we stand steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as we know this is the perfect will of God concerning us. have no intentions of going back, turning back to the old form of life, making ourselves unfit for the kingdom of God. Can't blame anybody if we do that but self. And so he says here, man, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. I refuse to try to interpret it. I let the word interpret itself. Let it fall where it may. Let the Holy Spirit convict. But we got to put it out there. Again, the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 42, the King James Bible tells us, Paul tells them in the church, he's speaking to preachers, leaders, every believer in there that's baptized with the Holy Ghost. Paul is telling them because he's telling them, this is what I have to do, follow my example. You, you, you know my history, you know my, my suffering, but now do you know my God? Do you know who I'm, who I'm representing now? Do you know who I'm an ambassador for now? Follow me as I follow Christ. I would encourage you to do the same thing. If we stop following Christ, stop following us, go somewhere else. But if we're following Christ, it would be to your advantage. And I'm not trying to you know, take nobody's people out of their church. I'm a gospel preacher and a teacher. And I'm not trying to impress nobody. I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. These scriptures interpret themselves. I'm not giving no interpretation. 
I'm, I'm just proving to you what they spoke to me and continue to speak to me and, and my wife and uh, Pastor Eric, Pastor Phoebe, Minister Smith and Minister Bigger than whoever else is make up the congregation and New Freedom Christian Ministry and More Than Conquered Warriors and that broader audience that we have out there. We have quite a few people following us, listening to these messages. They want to be free. I don't know whether they're in churches, whether they belong to the denomination. Now, I'm not caught up in that. I, I let the word of God go out. However God want to use it, I want to tell God, the Bible said, some plant, some water, but God gives the increase. Yeah. He has enlarged our territory. He's given us a virtual platform. We're on YouTube live. We have Facebook live. We have many streams that are out there. This word is going into other countries. It's across the board in the, in the nation on 15,000 radio stations. Number one, creating a prayer culture for God on radio stations. Number one being listened to. I didn't do that. We prayed that prayer Jabez and fasted for 21 days. And the Lord told us, I'm enlarging the territory when we started back in 2018. Because he's a God that's faithful to increase when it pleases him. And I'm making a boast in him now because we plant, we water, one in the same, we don't know. But God, listen to me, God gives the increase because we're not trying to build no big church. I've been asked that question many times when people come to 725 East Calhoun Street and we gather, where is everybody? I said, everybody's supposed to be here, it's here. I had to tell a person one day, man, because they're telling me about God had a word for us. I said, well, he giving the pastor Sharon and the he giving us word for us. Why would he bring four, four females in here, say they was told to go to all the churches and brains and give a word? And I said, no, that's what we here for. So for all those you out there in leadership, bringing all these folks in here, man, from around the world, other churches and other places, I know what that's about. You're going to go to their church at their next revival, and it's going to be about money. Filthy lucre. But what the Lord told me, I don't want you to build a bigger church so that sinners can hide. But I do order, purpose, that you build bigger believers in this small church. And that's what we've been doing. Incredible testimonies. Because people know who they are and they know who God is and they know what they can do. All things through Christ who strengthens them and they don't try to do what only God can do because some things are impossible with man. So when stuff don't go like it's supposed to, they don't get bent out of shape. They start looking for God to increase their faith, take them to another level of faith, take them to another level of strength, take them to another level of glory. Why? They don't start reckoning that the sufferings of those present times that we're going through the light affliction a word that to be compared, put them side by side to the glory that's going to be revealed at that time. And when God see that faith, he's pleased because without faith, it's impossible to please God. He don't want you to spend four hours telling him about your problem, what he already knows what's happening. He sees it. But we want you to do the same thing he told Jeremiah. Tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. Put me in remembrance of my word. What he's telling you is, do you see my benefit? Do you see this opportune time for me to show myself strong in your weakness? Can my strength be made perfect? Then you start saying what he said, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Start saying what God can use. Start speaking faith. But if you ain't in the world where faith, how faith comes in a springing forth of a revelation, then know that there are some things according to the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 27, the King James Bible, the disciples had this problem before us. And they came to him with, with all these things. And he said, look, these things that's troubling you, struggling, they are not possible with man, but they are possible with God. We can do all things that's possible for us to do that he's given us the power to do, but there are some things he reserved for him to do. Why? He wants us to love him, to depend on him, to hope in him, to be confident in him, to be reassured in him. Now we can hope in him going forward. That's the hope of glory that God wants to see. And so he says, you know, they were moved by the Holy Ghost. I think it's time 
for us to cut out all these annual one week, three day revivals and let the Lord come in and do what only he can do, revive us and give us life. Let the Holy Ghost initiate the revival. Because if you really want a spiritual revival, man can't do it, but we're doing it. Because if you really think about the kind of revival that changes lives, it call, it's called the place of death, where we die to our tradition, we die to all that we've become accustomed and used to, where I'm in charge, not God, not the Holy Spirit. It's the same thing with worship. If you understand under the old covenant what was considered worship, priests had to fast and go through all kinds of ceremonial cleansing for a whole year to bring that, that, that animal who they had fed and took care of and had it as pure as they could get it. And they brought thousands like that as people came to the outer court. They had to bring that sacrifice. They couldn't come up there with no mad cow, crippled chicken, bro. They all had to be pure. They started doing that, contaminating the worship. And the priest's life was hanging in the balance. And once they brought it into the inner court, they slaughtered it. Thousands of them. People came from all around the different provinces that we, 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 we talked about earlier, Roman provinces. That was the ceremonial system. And once they ex accepted it, they took it in and they gave the pieces, the Levites bought it in, chosen race of people set aside for that, helped the, the, the priest, they secured it to the horns on the altar on each side. And they set it afire. And as the fragrance burned of that choice slain sacrifice, yeah. the smoke went up. Yes. created a cloud and it was a sweet aroma and a sweet smell because something had died that was significant yeah. and important to them that they separated themselves for because they wanted to please God. But here's the deal. That was the sacrifice signified death, dying to self-will, mm -hmm. dying to what you think is right. Mm -hmm. But out of all that sacrifice, that priest had to be ceremonially clean. And some of the, the documentation said that they had to put a rope around his ankle because if he was not ceremonially clean and he was the one responsible in the holies of holies for announcing that the sins of the people for that whole year had been placed on that goat that was released into the wilderness, and they got another year to be ceremonially clean and pleased before God. They drug him out if he wasn't because he couldn't stand. No flesh could dwell in the presence of God. So the animal sacrifice had to be right choice stuff. Well, guess what? That's to me is the, 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 the framework for worship. He says that we have to come now as a sacrifice. Yeah priest, all of us priests, and present our bodies just like that priest. That veil was rent when Jesus died. So now we can go into the Holy Spirit and present ourselves, all repentant and forgiven sins prior to going into preparation, just like they did in the outer court and inner court to get that sacrifice ready. Get rid of our sin. Don't just come in the house of God, offer him anything. You and I are the sacrifice now, but we're a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God without spot or without wrinkle. Yes. And that's through repentance. And when we do that and lay on that altar, present our, we got to see ourselves as I'm the one now that's strapped to this altar. Yes. And when my praise and worship goes up, it should be a sweet odor of fragrance, a sweet aroma, not something that somebody up there on the pulpit told me to do. but it should be my personal offering of praise and worship and adoration and love, making it known to God that one audience and everybody else in there should be doing the same thing that I'm doing. Doesn't happen often. 
Some folks sleeping, some texting, some distracted, some doing all walking, going outside to make a phone call. But we're supposed to be in worship. We're supposed to be a, a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God. Out in the club last night, ain't repented about nothing. Just got up this morning and put on anything and everything, threw a wig on and came to church to worship God. And I ain't going to do nothing unless the person in charge of that tell me to stand up, say three amen, lift my hand, run around the church, whatever. That's supposed to be a place of death. And when I die spiritually to all the things that, that offend me, that, you know, that, that I'm carrying weights and burdens, he said, set aside every weight that's we to be set to. We drag that stuff to church. Could be mad at somebody sitting two rows of people over in the church. But we in there with our hands up because we were told to put them up. But it ain't our heart. He's seeking for such that will worship him in spirit and in truth. So we got to be willing to die to offenses. Some of you are offended with what I'm saying right now. We got to die to that. I tell people all the time, you can't kill a dead man. I die. When I gave my life to the Lord, we've been resurrected. I ain't by myself. My wife and I died at the same time. Yes. Yes. His spirit wouldn't come and live in us, no dirty temple. The word continued to purify, sanctify. You know, I was there with my oldest daughter, Pastor Peter, and Pastor got baptized in the Holy Ghost after they saw what it did and how it changed us. Minister Smith been a bigger, you know, that's the key right there. Our prayer is that all believers be baptized, feel, sealed, and healed, walking in the victory by the Holy Ghost, the promise of the Father, even the spirit of truth. You don't need no man to teach you nothing save the Holy Ghost. That's what the Bible says. In the book of John, you read chapter 14, verse 26, chapter 15, verse 26, chapter 16, verse, it'll tell you. And it says he wants to come inside of us to teach us all things that Jesus didn't finish teaching when he was here. He said, I'm praying to the Father that he would send you the promise, even the spirit of truth. And when Jesus ascended, he came. Oh, yes. And the original translation said he's a paracletos, meaning one that comes alongside. We're never out of his presence. Anywhere we go, we know the Holy Ghost is right there bearing records with our spirit to the word of God. So when we hear people say stuff, we try with the spirit. If it ain't, we, we can't walk together in agreement. Except we agree. What the prophet Amos said. And sometimes people take the scripture out of Amos, the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 7, King James Bible. Hey, Lord, I ain't going to say nothing unless he, uh, he, he speak by a prophet. I just read you what the, what the scripture said, knowing this first. No, all this stuff people bringing to your house right now and calling themselves prophet and prophetess. What about the prophecies that he says right here that was in with no private interpretation that was spoken before. We skip those prophecies that was already foretold. We don't remind you what has already been fulfilled. Yeah. We don't tell you right now prophetically what's really taking place right now. It's all documented revelation, uh, Daniel, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah. It's all right there. Minor major prophets. So we can plan for, prepare for what is to come. We just want some itching ears, somebody to tell me about how to get a new house. And I, I want to be able to plant my, plant my thousand dollar seed and I'm going to get this and I want to get that. That's what our ears want to hear. And we lord all these people up and get them in and they be dressed. I mean, I ain't going to say they be dressed to kill, but they be dressed, man. And we look at that and say they got to be anointed, you know, five, six, some of them 15 armor bears. They got to be anointed. That kind of following. Not without money, though. But God, to me, did not send out no aggressive beggars. You won't see a cash out anywhere mm. on what we do. Because we're not about filthy lucre. God has already paid us in full. My wife and I have been retired now, man, for almost 20 years. And we've never had to want for any good or beneficial thing. Pastor Eric and Pastor Peter retired and went back to work. Don't have to want for any good or beneficial thing. Minister Smith owned a couple of businesses. 
Minister Betty owns a business. You don't have to want for any good or beneficial thing. They choose to work serving people, serving God more. And there are others. If you talk to them, they'll tell you how their lives have been transformed by what we teach from the word, what they study for themselves from the word. Thank you, Lord. Because the word never fails. It is the truth that answers false teaching and false prophecy and tradition that we were raised up on. Been freed though by the word. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, the King James Bible, and I'm gonna be bringing it in a minute. This is only the beginning. I'll be right back in the morning, picking up where I left off at, Tuesday morning, picking up where I left off at. Any other time in the future, when I get ready to speak, Pastor Sharon gonna talk a little bit about this on Thursday night with him call. So we're gonna exhaust everything that, that Peter here is talking about to the, to the broader church, wow. to all those five providences in Rome. That's where he wrote this to. Cause they had some problem with suffering and persecution and, mm -hmm. and pervert stuff that was going on in the church that was not supposed to be going on in the church. And Peter was a bold brother, man. He said, no, nah, we ain't supposed to be doing this. And you know, in other words, in language terms. So he, listen to this, it said, seeing ye have purified your souls, listen now, in obeying the truth, not tradition, not philosophy, not the wisdom of the world, but truth, now why? God wants you to know the truth and the truth make you free. Book of John, chapter 8, verse 32, the King James Bible. This year, God told us the word for the, of the Lord in 2023 is a word for truth seekers. If you want to know the truth, let it purify your soul. Start obeying it. Yeah. It changed us. We heard it. We studied it. We read it. We meditated on it. And we memorize it because that's what Jesus did so that when he was tempted by Satan in the wilderness, it was him having the word of God readily available. He has spent 30 and a half, 30 years learning. At 12, he was learning, listening to the teachers and the philosophers. They were teaching the sacred scriptures. And later on, it's 18 years later, it was his custom to continue to do that. Finally, he fulfilled every earthly test that we were supposed to fulfill by being baptized by John the Baptist, that boy is crying in the wilderness. And as John was baptizing, he had all these 3,000 or so people out there baptizing them unto repentance now. And he says this statement here in the book of Matthew, I want to say chapter three, he says in verse 10 and 11, he says, there's one coming after me. Who I mean, I'm not even worried to latch up the, the latches on his sandals. He's gonna baptize you with fire and power. And as he's making this statement to them, as he's out there crying, baptizing them under repentance, Jesus appears. There he was. And I can just imagine the expression on John. And he told John, John, John said, you, you need to baptize me. And Jesus said, no, you don't understand. I got to fulfill all of the Old Testament covenant. You got to baptize me. This is kind of like the last straw right here. I got to complete this. Why? Because I'm fully man right now. I'm the son of man right now. At the same time, I'm the son of God. But I got to do this so the father can approve of what I did. That's for you, John. That's for all these. To put you back can right standing. So I got to fulfill the law. I didn't come to destroy it, get rid of it. Last act. And the Bible said when John baptized Jesus as the son of man, human, the Bible said when Jesus came up out that water, baptism means to be totally immersed. He ain't sprinkling. He took him all the way down, submerged him, just like we supposed to do. All this sprinkling and baby shower, that ain't baptism. It's a Latin word to mean to emerge or submerge. Got to go all the way down. Why? That's our watery grave. We ain't got to go get in no tomb and die, but we got to die in water baptism in order to relate to his death, burial, and resurrection in real time. Go read the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 4, the King James Bible. It says we are identified with his death, burial, and resurrection through water baptism. That was great. Because we got the Holy Ghost baptizes a believer into the family of God, the kingdom of God. Then he baptizes the believer with himself. 
And then we go through water baptism. Amen. Three types of baptism. Mm -hmm. Then we come up out of that water, it says in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 4 the King James Bible. And we walk in the newness of life just like Jesus did. It says, as soon as he came up, he, he didn't tarry around there. Why? He knew that the last days was, was near. He had to get busy. And the Bible said right away, he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Ghost, just got baptized. Remember the Father said, when of heaven opened up, a dove-like figure came upon him and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Son of man became up my beloved son. Why? He had satisfied the Father. Father couldn't look at him long as he was in sin, long as he hadn't fulfilled everything. But it was over, just like on the cross, he was going to say, it's finished. And the Bible said he was led. Now, he didn't just go. He was led into the wilderness, that hard place, to be tempted by Satan. Yes. But he was full of power. But he was also full of the word. The word was the power that was in him. He had learned it. And when Satan tried to tempt him, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Every word now. Book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 18, 19. You'll read it right there. Where was Jesus going? Just in the wilderness to be tempted? And Satan came back two more times. You can read it. He was on his way back to the temple. Same place where he had been, where they denied who he was before all of this. Remember they called him, you know, did that Joseph son, did any good thing come out? Of, he was going right back there now to let them see him resurrecting it as, as God's approved son. And the Bible said he went straight to the minister and took the book, the prophecies of Isaiah, the book of Mo, all of the sacred writings. Some folks don't even open no Bible in church anymore. They bring a little three by five card, a little notepad, back of an email, write two or three talking points and get up there and preach five minutes and tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm finished. They don't like long-winded preachers. They why? It might expose the error of their ways when you open up the scriptures and preach from the inspired word of God. I'm going to run my mouth to Jesus until somebody gets saved. All that hell I raised and cracking on people in my day and talking about people all night sometimes. I should definitely have more to say about Jesus these days now that I'm saved. Then I had to say when I was representing the devil in the flesh, in my, in, you know, in my, in my unsaved uh, traditional ways. That's all I want to do now, run my mouth to Jesus and somebody get saved. Because I got a lot to say about him. That's how we overcome according to the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 and 11. By the blood of the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world and by the word of our testimony. His word is my testimony. Yes. And we love not this life unto death. Three things. You can go read it. Amen. But it's saying Jesus went to the temple and he took the book and he opened it. Where it was written what Isaiah had prophesied. Well, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. All these folks running around here talking about and they anointed let me tell you what the word anointing is talking about, Old Testament, New Testament, it doesn't matter. It's not charisma. It's not feeling good. It, it ain't all of that. Anointing is the presence of God with you. That's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Somebody pushing you down, man, and you're on the floor crying. That ain't anointing when you get right up and go do the same thing you did before you came. If the anointing of God hit the place and the Chicano glory comes with it. The Bible said the preacher won't even be able to stand and preach the sermon. Let me tell you something. Charisma, showmanship, I'll even throw in fanaticism, uh, pump and whatever, stomping and croning, that is not anointing. All that energy, that's not anointing. Don't be confused. You got to have the glory and the presence. Scripture calls it Shatkana glory. Mm -hmm. And when you that when that kind of anointing shows up, that's anointing. It goes beyond my ability. 
Yokes are destroyed. People are free. You don't have to put hands on them. The Holy Ghost, if they're to lay down, will lay them down. Prostrate. We don't have those kind of services anymore because we feel like we got to do it. And call it anointing. Flawed character. Don't even praise God ourselves. Won't even stand up with the congregation. We'll sit there, legs crossed, and tell people out there to clap their hands and give me three amen. And then get up. And I'm up seven minutes. Don't even open my Bible. Got a little, little envelope a little car, with some talking points wrote down on it. Crone a little bit. Ha ha a little bit. Wipe some sweat off my forehead. I got two or three brothers up there to come and wipe sweat off, bring me some water. Or don't even let your wife come, but got the usher somebody wiping sweat off you. You know, that ain't anointing, y'all. Show me shit. Anointing destroyed the yoke, and it ain't your anointing. Charisma is not a meal. Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep. That's what he's doing right here. Feeding God's sheep in them five provinces throughout Rome. Named them early. I'm going to name them again. Because they were cheated true deliverance, true anointing. And they were being persecuted. Some for his name's sake. Some just because they were just in that place. And they had to live through persecution. The truth helps you to live through persecution because a lot of persecution came from false teaching, false prophecy. Wasn't prospering or benefiting the people. Same thing happening today. We go through the same thing. I, I listed a whole bunch of things that I've been through, but I haven't lost the word of my testimony. I haven't lost my desire to please God. I walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. God has taken us to another level of faith. To demonstrate to you all what can happen when the anointing of God shows up. It ain't mine. It's his anointing. He keeps the yokes off of us. He destroys them because he knows we're going to be faithful over a few things. Over the work he's called us to do. And greater work shall we do. Why? Because of the paracletos, the Holy Ghost. Great is he that's in us and he that's in the world. So let me give you a couple more scriptures and we're going to get you out of here. Notice what he said. Now seeing ye have purified your souls. And obeying the truth through the spirit, and that's a big ass, not talking about the spirit of God, not no human spirit. Unto unfrightened love, that means that the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 5 of the King James Bible, it reads this by the power of God, by the love of God that has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. See, the only way to live on this earth in victory is by love. Hate won't do it, but it can't be just love where you do for me, I do for you. It's got to be love of God, love for God, love God first, and then love others as yourself. We want, we want to love people before we love God, and God is jealous. We want to hate people, but say we love God. He said, how can you say you love me? You ain't never seen me. And hate your brother you see every day. That ain't love. Now how about it? Faith, hope, and love. These two, but the greatest of these is love. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. King James Bible. That's how we're going to live the way God wants us to live on this earth. By love. And he gives us the love that he wants us to have. He said, by, by love that's been shed abroad. Listen to me now. In our hearts by the Holy Ghost. That's how we're going to live on this earth. See, we choose to love everybody all the time in every situation and circumstance. We try to give you what you need and not what you want. Too many people trying to give people what they want. It's in ears. We don't even have to know you to love you. We pray for you every day. We will continue because we love God and we know he's looking. How can I call myself a minister of the gospel and not pray for the love of God? to quicken everybody out there that's without love. Starting in the pulpit, starting in the White House, you house, everywhere. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What is God? That we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, our mind, our strength, 
and we love our neighbors as ourselves. Greatest two commandments. With our love, we have nothing. We're like tinkling breath and sounding cymbals. That's what he said. I'm fighting love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 22, the King's Empire. I'm not picture Peter telling these persecuted people how to love the ones that's been persecuting them as they're suffering in those providences, as people are suffering today. The thing they really need is love, the love of God, the love of the brethren, and they need to be fervent. No respect to person, no private interpretation, no picking and choosing, just love by the Holy Ghost that's been shed abroad in our hearts. God gave uh, this word this morning, you know, just to encourage me, and I feel not me only, but somebody else also can receive this word and be blessed. And I pray, Lord, your will be done, your kingdom come. This is specifically and expressly for God's soldiers and God's workmen first, so that it can be for everybody else. But if we don't get it first, if we don't get it first, I'm closing in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 14 to 21, the King James Bible. Listen carefully. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study, gather some information so you know what to tell them based on what God is inspiring. To show thyself approved unto God, not approved to people, but unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. I'm not ashamed, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation for all who shall believe. But how can you believe except you hear? And how can you hear except there be a preacher sent by God? That's in the book of Romans chapter one, verse 16. Not ashamed, rightly, cutting it straight, dividing the word of truth, not tradition, not philosophy, not the wisdom of the world, but truth. That's the only thing that can make you free. And if Christ, meaning the way, the truth, and the light, make you free, then we free indeed. But shun profane, uh, profound, a uh, profane and vain babbling. Let me see that again. Shun it. Get rid of it. Separate from it. Don't even go around it. Okay. He says, shun those profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their words will eat as do a, a, a canker worm. When God want to restore everything that the canker worm has eaten up and the locusts have eaten up or stolen. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Philistus. So he gives some examples here. So if they had examples in that church, they got examples in the church today. Who, listen to how he describes their character who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already. All these folks celebrate Easter, keeping that pay, and not the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Listen to what he said. Got the same thing going on today now. In past, I mean, it's past already. He rose on the third day. He still resurrected. He's still raising up many women today. We heard earlier, if you die in Christ, though you be dead, yet shall you live. Why? Because of the resurrection power that's coming. If we die in Christ, we can be resurrected spiritually right now, but we got to die to self, die to the world. He goes on to say now, past already. So there's no more... Uh, sacrifice for sin. He already died, got in the grave, fully dead, and got up on the third day. So he took the resurrection power with him, and right now he's still resurrecting souls in this world. Mm -hmm. If you come to him and believe. Mm -hmm. And overthrew the faith of some. 
never steep in tradition back then, teaching of Moses and Abraham. He brought in a new way and a new, you know, a new doctrine under the new covenant, fulfilled the old covenant, didn't do away with it. More excellent way the Bible says. He says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Yes. The Lord knoweth them, listen to me carefully, that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity, things that separate us from God. But in a great house, love this, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, <clears throat> but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. It ain't my word now. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Good work now, what we're going to take with us. That's in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 14 of the King James Bible. Now, we have to study to show ourselves approved. That means to seek to be a true teacher of God's word, not one who just spews out unsupported, undocumented, empty heresies or words. Instead, words inspire to and approved by God, the sacred holy scriptures in the canon that's documented, words to be unashamed and unshakable, to be able to correctly teach the word of God. And so I'm going to end right there. Father, yes, we thank you, thank you that you've allowed us today to feed your sheep, yes, to give them something to eat, Thank you. something mm -hmm. that will bring deliverance and healing and victory, prosperity, change, revelation, wisdom, knowledge, understanding that they can apply to their day-to-day -day life and walk in victory because your word will never pass away. So shall it be that goes forth out of your mouth. It will do what you please and accomplish the purpose to which you sent it. You sent your word according to the book of Psalms chapter 107 verse 20 to heal our disease. Jesus Christ was that living word full of grace and truth and to rescue us from destruction. We thank you for your inspired word that's good for doctrine, mm -hmm. good for reproof, yes. good for correction and instruction in righteousness yes. that we as men and women of God may be 30 friends and prepared unto every good work, works that we will take with us when we depart mm -hmm. this life. So Father, we pray now as we have done what you told us to do. We have preached the word of God to the people of God. We have expounded by the power of the Holy Ghost your word without any private interpretation. We did not add to it or take from it, but we were inspired by the Holy Ghost to speak directly to the souls of your people the word of truth. So Holy Ghost, Spirit of truth, we ask you now to continue to inspire those who have received the word, who have heard the word, who believe the word, who have heard the word and now faith has come, that they can believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this day. Yes. So the scriptures say, how can they believe except they hear? And how can they hear except there be a preacher? And how can we preach except we be sent to carry the good news of the gospel to the lost and dying untoward generation that's out here today. Backslidden, lost, yes, yes. prodigal sons and daughters, gone out into the world, riotous living. Right. Still in marriage and partying God. Mm. Putting off today.
for tomorrow that's not promised. What is your life but a vapor here today and, and going and then the judgment? Not ready to be justified in what they're doing and what they say and what they haven't done. Committing sin, sin of commission and sin of omission. Omitting to do what thus said the Lord and committing things against your perfect will. Mm. So we're praying today. Let this be a day. Transform it into a day of salvation. Yes, let revival of the soul come right now, God, by this truth. Let revival of the spirit, the heart, the mind, the life come forth today by the Holy Ghost with conviction, strong conviction. And so we pray today that there come a visitation of the Holy Ghost in every service, Lord, today. And henceforth, God, that we not play church anymore, that we come together as one body where God is the head and Jesus is over the church. Many members, Amen. but one faith, one baptism, one spirit, Lord God. Yes. Mm. Rightly, knitly, fitly, joined together in the household of faith by the Holy Ghost. Yes. By that, that every ligament, every member, every part of the body supplied to the body overall that it may edify itself in love till we all come into the unity of the faith and to the full stature yes. of the knowledge of your son Jesus Christ. So as it is in earth, it is as it is in heaven, it'll be in earth. Yes. Bring us to that vertical alignment. Yes. Deliver us from placing so much emphasis on horizontal relationships and sacrifice in vertical relationships. You're calling us now, God, into spiritual harmony, spiritual unity. That we live our lives today, the things that matter, and the conclusion be only what we do for the Lord is what's going to count in the end. That our whole duty as soldiers in your army. Yes is to love you, God, and keep your commandments. Yes. So I pray now that whoever heard this word, God, that even right now as conviction is coming, that right now, wherever they may be, if you're out there today, I want to offer you an invitation right now to just where you're at. Just ask God. Just, just ask him to forgive you and just, just let him know right now he's waiting to hear from you knocking on the door, open that door and invite him to come in and just confess the Lord Jesus. Just, Lord, I'm a sinner backslidden, prodigal son, prodigal daughter, lost, and I want to be saved. And I realize there's only one Savior. His name is Jesus. No other name by which I can be saved. So I ask you now, forgive me of my sins. Yes. Cleanse me of all my righteousness. Yes. Baptize me into the kingdom of God. Yes. Baptize me, Holy Ghost, with power yes. and fire yes. and water. Hallelujah. Change my language, my conversation, that I speak with a new tongue. Feel me, seal me, heal me, and give me the victory. I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior with my mouth, and today I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And Father God, I believe that you so love this world to include me, that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sin, and if I believe in him, I shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And if I fail to walk away today and not believe in him, I'm already condemned. But if I do, I already have eternal life. Yes. So thank you for saving thank me. You, thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Holy Ghost, for coming thank inside you. and living in me. Thank you, thank you. And say now, denounce you. I no longer serve you, interested in you. I'm in this world, but I'm no longer of this world. I'm a new creation today because I'm in Christ Jesus. Old things are not departed from me. God has taken them away and hidden them in the sea of forgiveness, never to be heard of again. I will walk in the newness of life. I will identify with his death, burial, and resurrection through water baptism. So, Lord, order me and my steps to that place Thank where I can fulfill all of your scripture. Thank you. That I may be a new man, a new woman, a new person. In Christ Jesus, fulfilling all of the scripture is my prayer. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. All right, then. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I be finished with the message today. 
There will be a continuation until we exhaust all of Peter's epistle. There's two of them, first and second. A lot of good stuff there. We're going to continue until we do that. Invite you to come on back in the morning at 6 a.m. Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. 667-770-1557. Uh, access code is 123218-POUND. 6 a.m. Creating a prayer culture for God. Get all of the message. Come back Wednesday night, Bible Power Prayer, 730, same number. Come back Thursday night for Wisdom Call, Bible Study and Prayer, same number, access code. Pastor Sharon will be picking up and continue to build uh, this uh, epistle, this revelation, this testimony of Peter to the people in those different provinces. And until we exhaust this and, uh, you know, Pastor Eric, Pastor Phoebe, Minister Smith, Minister Biggers, Whatever the Lord gives them, hopefully they'll continue as we lay out what God has given us to give you. Amen. And so you have the information. You can follow us. We have YouTube live. We archive every message, every teaching. So you can go back and listen to this, you know, criticize me, critique me, do whatever. But Amen. I've tried to give you enough foundation of scriptures to prove what I'm saying is actually the inspired word of God. I don't just make stuff up. Sometimes I may get a little bit of my experience and opinion in there, but I try to tell you that too. And so it is what it is. Hopefully you've been blessed today. What your ears have heard, your heart has, has received, and your mind has been, you know, activated to think on the thoughts of God, his word. You know, we love you. We thank God for you. Thank you for allowing us to come in and minister to you today. And I hope it's been a blessing to you. There's more to follow, more to come. All right, then. Hey, we love you again tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. to the 6 a.m. We'd love to have you come join us because there's more to come. All right. Well, God bless. God bless. God bless. We love you. That concludes the message. Yeah. Right, let me get out of here. Where it says, yeah, please. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Wait a minute, I said leave. Yeah.